Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by GhostBed.com. Welcome to Drinking Bros, kids. Didn't get a flight out. It got canceled, Anthony. Um, so here I am in studio for, for one more day today. I told you. You were right, man. I was not expecting yet another blizzard. That was that well, was a surprise for me. It wasn't really a blizzard. But, but you saw the footage where I was, right? Like, that was yeah. gnarly, man. I mean, it's, I like that kind of snow. Uh, do, yeah, do you? Yeah, as long as it's not on top of old smoking. Like six fucking feet of frozen ice already. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, moving to singles, Dan. Let's, uh, let's do it today. I'm, I'm going with some uh, Cardamax Energy Intensifier Vodka and White Claw. That's my new mix. Ooh, lately. let's see that, dude. It's good. I've, I've been drinking this a lot lately. Uh, look at that. In the, middle of, in the middle of the day. Look at that. That Cardomax package is easy, too, to open, in case it you're is, wondering yeah. at home. Big fan, uh, Cardomax. Um, what is it? Fucking, it's BOGO there. Energy intensifier. Buy one, get one free. It makes me think of those, those, uh, all those memes where it's like whatever intensifies. Yeah. And the, like the thing starts shaking. It doesn't make you shake. But. No, but it makes you want to punch a baby, dude. Uh, for or, sure, it's great. Or punch Ray Care in the face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. don't know why I want to punch him so I bad. I wouldn't recommend it. No, he'll beat the Christ out of somebody. Yeah. He's a, he's yeah. a beefcake. Yeah, yeah. He's, uh, he's a large man. Uh, but go to cardomax.com and then uh, promo code DB for a BOGO there. Buy one, get one free just because we love it. We've been yeah. drinking it all, all, all day. Because we're stuck in the studio, so we thought, hey, man. I'm going to record one more before I get yeah. out of here. And I want to, I want to speak on... Uh, There's a lot of stuff going on here. Yes. And I, before, but I, I want to talk about what we got from fake news. Because there was a lot of, of fucking comments on fake news right. that uh, they were like, man, I don't know why you'd go so hard on Ted Cruz. Like, you know, uh, he was taking his daughter on an early spring break. I mean, I, I've read all of the comments on all of our things. And I'm like, first of all, it's February. Spring break isn't for a... A good month, six weeks, yeah. right? Uh, can't hear that. He also flew back himself and said, hey, man, this was the wrong thing for me to do. Look, I don't give a shit about Ted Cruz. I never have. No, okay? one, no one really cares about him. People Apparently only, they do because we got no, a lot of messages. Pe people feel like, and it's what I talk about all the time with binary politics, you feel like you're in a position that you have to defend this person even when they act like a piece of shit. It is yeah. a problem. If you're not, a, if you're not as mad about Ted Cruz doing what he did as you were about Nancy Pelosi and the fucking hairdresser or uh, <clears throat> Gavin Newsom Gavin Newsom and yeah. French Laundry, then you're a fucking hypocrite, frankly. I, and I don't yes. want to hear from you. I've been arguing with people about it all day. Oh, this, is, this isn't even comparable to what fucking Cuomo did. No, it's not comparable to what he did. But being a piece of shit is being a piece of shit. Right. Like, what is it? We, we're having a dick measuring contest about who's the bigger cunt. They're all fucking cunts. APAC, bitch. You yeah. know what I mean? So get the fuck out, Ted. You lost. You get one chance. Uh, you, you only get one shot. And mom's spaghetti, the whole thing. Yes. And, and I agree, man, with all these people. And it's like, dude, we went hard after Cabo Steve, Steve Adler here, uh, the mayor yeah. of, uh, of Austin. Yeah, he and, Democrats. Cruz, he and Cruz should go together next Th That's time. what I said. I said on Twitter, I was like, dude, go Just and do this stuff together. Like, suck each other's dicks. It's the optics of it. Now, me as a person, do I give a shit? No. Because even somebody was like, well, hey, man, you're going to leave. You're going to leave and go back to North Carolina. Dude, I, I lost the first floor in my house, and that's fine. Yeah. I'm with a two-year-old. <laughs> I'm also not an elected official. Um, well, you're leaving after the emergency's over, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Not it's gonna during be, it. It's going to be 70. And people have said that, too. Like, if you had the ability to leave, you would have. I'm, I've got plenty of money. I could leave here anytime I fucking want. I've yeah, got yeah, a four-wheel yeah. drive <laughs> SUV. I could have driven out of here on Tuesday and said, fuck all you motherfuckers, man. That, is, that would be very easy to do. Yeah, and it's like, hey, man, I, I get a, I, another place. I have a two-year-old. I'm not an elected official, so... Therefore, I don't give a shit. I mean, the equivalent would now, have... Now, if I was an elected official the, no, no, the and left, forget about, yes. forget about that. In this scenario, the equivalent would have been you leaving Jesse and the kids at home and, and going to fucking Cabo. You know right. what I mean? That would have been the equivalent. Not, not leaving the state with your family. Yeah. Right? He, yeah. His, when you're an elected official, your family is your constituency. Mm -hmm. you, don't, you don't have the luxury anymore to just be loyal to your fucking internal, like your, your immediate family. That's not how that fucking works. Yeah, man. And, uh, you know, I, we can't go after other people and not go after Ted mm -hmm. Cruz. Right. Um, so we call it like we see it. We call it even here on this one. So as far as the comments and all that, like that won't stop if you make a bad decision and the optics look bad for mm -hmm. your your party or you as a representative. Yes, dude, we'll call you out. I don't care who it is. 
Um, you know, I, shit, I wasn't happy with Trump's Twitter in the way that he used it, but it didn't, it didn't stop me from voting for him. But hey, man, all of these candidates all the way around, uh, if they make mistakes, you have to, or not candidates, fucking elected officials. If they, if they make mistakes, dude, you go after them. And that's it, man. Uh, fuck, I don't know Ted Cruz. He could be a rad dude. You know? No, he's definitely not. Ted Cruz is a piece of shit. He could be doing blow in, in uh, Cancun. I, if he was doing cocaine, that would be fine with that. But what I'm not fine with is the fact that he spent half of his career trying to keep gay people from getting married. Mind mm. your fucking business, Ted. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You fucking little bitch. <laughs> uh, he also reauthorized the Patriot Act. This guy's a cunt. Yeah. Just like every other fucking politician. All politicians are cunts. And if you can't call out every politician, then we're hypocrites for calling out me personally, right? I'm a fucking Republican. I can't call out AOC and all these other fucking idiots if I can't call out people from my own fucking party, too. That's not how it works. I'll look like a fucking asshole. So, yes, dude, Cancun Cruz made a mistake. So did Cabo Steve and the rest of these fucking idiots, Gavin Newsom, Pelosi, everybody else that we have named. But that's the deal. Um, the, point, the point isn't that Ted Cruz is a piece of shit. The point isn't how much of a piece of shit he is in comparison to Pelosi or, or way up here, Cuomo or whatever the fuck. The point is, they're all pieces of shit. Yeah, yeah. Dude. Do not trust these fucking people. No, no. God damn it, man. I don't know how many times I got to fucking say this shit. Uh, it's crazy. Uh, so that's, that's one at, at the top here. Two off the top is the Facebook thing. Now, we, we did this in depth. Uh, did we get back on it Thing today? with Jared. Um, that's a great question. Um, fake Dan, we get back on this yesterday or uh, today when we went back to stream on I'm not seeing the notification for it. Well, we're not streaming today because this is pre-recorded oh, for yeah. For Sunday night, but uh, I'll, I'll tell the audience what's going on. We walked in to the studio after Thursday's episode with Jared. We went live for fake news, and uh, we have this program called Restream, right? Um, pretty pricey. It goes out to all the, the, the channels, and we were like, hey, man, let's get it out to YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, um, personal sites, some other thing. It does it for you all at the same time, and it's live. It's, it's a great app, and it's awesome. This morning when we got in, um, we saw that uh, Facebook, we got a message from Restream saying, hey man, Facebook is now disallowed yeah. Drinking Bros mm. podcast. To be clear, we've been using this forever. Forever. And we've been putting full episodes on Drinking Bros for Drinking Bros podcast on, on, yeah, on Facebook. Almost. Yeah. I yeah. mean, not consistently. There, was, there were gaps, but it's definitely been up there for consistently for a while now. And we've been putting on, them on at least intermittently for six years now. Yes. And all of a sudden... When Jared goes into an in-depth discussion about how to stop Facebook from stealing your data, from following you around, mm. like they, they capture every fucking piece of data on your phone. It, when you leave the Facebook app, it's still running in the background. It's looking at your web history, your emails, everything, your text messages, everything. Yeah. Jared showed people how to turn that off. And within minutes, they killed our feed on Facebook. I mean, we were live on air and yeah. they killed the feed. I am not, everybody knows if you watch the show that I used to do with Brinkus, uh, Conspiracy Truth Finders, mostly what we did was make fun of conspiracy theories because most of them are fucking stupid. Yeah, right? yeah. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm not either. This is not a conspiracy. This is cause and effect. Yes. And we got the email um, and we screenshotted it so we, we have it. Uh, we'll do another episode going more in depth about that later. We're going to do an entire episode just about how to fuck Facebook over, probably, right? Yeah. Because fuck them. Uh, and I mean, look, they're going through with Australia now. And we talked about that as well on the last show with, with the news and everything else. They want to own everything, control everything. They want to become their own media tell you what to do, tell you how to think, tell you what you should buy, uh, all based on an algorithm. But when you tell people at home how to shut that feature off of their, their app, uh, they will kill the feed and then they won't allow you to post anymore. Now, the craziest part for me, Dan, and I don't know if you agree with me on this, was how quickly the AI was able to pick it up from Facebook and kill the feed. I think it was seven minutes. Yes. We can go back, I'll, I'll go back and watch the video. Because you can tell, because we immediately when it cut, shut off, people started talking about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but then this morning when we got in and you know opened up the app and we got the email from Restream saying, "Hey, man, uh, Facebook is no longer allowing you guys to do that." Look, that was a no, that was a tame episode for Christ's sakes. I mean, usually we have porn stars on here or uh, crazy shit. That was a pretty tame episode, man. Um, you know, for the most part, we were talking about me losing my. Pipes in my house, Jared lost his in his house. 
uh, some COVID issues, like nothing crazy. Uh, and then we just talked about how to turn off the privacy um, data feature on your Facebook app. And uh, bingo, bango. It's funny. They, it's gone. The only reason they put the feature in there to be able to turn it off is because they're legally required to. Mm-hmm. Right. So for those of you out there who may be thinking, well, this is a private company. They can do what they want. Sure. But there's plenty of case law that says trying to take de facto measures internally to prevent regulation from doing what it's supposed to be doing is a crime. So what they're doing, that's illegal what they're doing. They're and trying to subvert privacy laws right now. Yeah, and all we were trying to tell you to do was to, to try to get a little bit of privacy back of like, here's how many people are tracking your stuff. And I think it was Giorgio yesterday who uh, pulled up my phone. Um, and God damn it. I mean, it was like 200 companies that were attached to my feed and I, I, dude, I, had, I had no idea yeah i'm not a tech guy anyways uh but holy shit man yeah. I, I was unaware that that's how many people were on the back end of just my personal page that wasn't even on like fan pages or anything like that because i mean drinking bros podcast has about sixty-eight thousand followers on that feed and like you know a lot of people said to me hey man facebook isn't what it used to be and it's not that popular right i agree with you I can't wait till it's it's over me personally, but until there is another app that replaces Facebook, we're kind of stuck for some of these yeah. things. I think we need another Me Too movement. For tech, for big tech. Yeah, yeah. it's like I got fucked by big tech too. Exactly, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> well, the rumor is Apple is... Apple's, Apple's dropping the hammer. They're at least threatening behind the scenes to remove the Facebook uh, application from their app store. So what happened uh, about 48 hours ago was, was Tim Cook was talking about... Uh, <laughs> you know, things you can expect from Apple in the future. Yeah. And he said, look, there is one massive thing that we are working on that, that we are the most proud of. And we think when we look, but when you look back on Apple in like 50 to 60 years, mm -hmm. it's going to be this one thing that we did that will, will essentially make Apple and make, make the world feel proud about owning Apple products. Right. And it mm -hmm. wasn't a product. It was simply these new privacy features that are coming out within their phones and within their computers. Yeah. Now, I don't know what they are, but clearly they were big enough and, and important enough for, uh, for them to go ahead and, um, you know, do a speech about it and everything. Yeah. So, Well, I mean, what I, I think the only reason that any of us are still on Facebook is because of the groups. Yes. And to be honest, I'm I'm we're, we're going to talk about this more in depth. Me, you and Jared are going to mm -hmm. talk about drinking bros at large. And we'll, we'll also include uh, Rocco, Matt and Evan, because they're really smart in this industry as well. And they have some vested interest in the drinking bros, not the business, but the community itself. Yeah. About yeah, yeah, yeah. moving it over to Clubhouse or something like that, because Clubhouse is group and group and discussion oriented. And that's kind of what these Facebook groups are meant for. Right. So something like Clubhouse or some maybe some other thing. Uh, that is not going to fuck with the content. And not, by the way, not the podcast. Uh, we're talking about the oh, private, no. yeah, private just, groups yeah. for you guys in the general. The community stuff. We don't make any money off of that, but we want you guys to be able to use it in a way that makes sense. For example. Because <clears throat> it's, all, it's all private. So yeah, like, yeah. there it's, are all these it's, private pages. It's Drinking private, bros. It's private and it's an opt-in only. Right. So right now we get two or three posts deleted a day by Facebook inside of just Drinking Bros Sports, which has what, like 10,000 members or some mm -hmm. shit? Two or three every single day. And it's just two dudes talking shit about each other's sports teams. And it's private. Like, fuck you. Your sports team yeah. sucks. And that's how men talk to one another. Yeah. And they're deleting that stuff because they're afraid of people's feelings. Now, one of the, one of the books that's going to be in my book club is called The Coddling of the American Mind, right? Basically what they talk about, these two uh, social scientists, psychologists, talk about Post-traumatic stress and cognitive behavioral therapy, CBT, is mm -hmm. the most common treatment for post-traumatic stress disorder, whether it's a rape victim or somebody that had some other traumatic event, death of a family member or war or whatever it is. It teaches you to reject certain things like catastrophizing is a process where you see some event and blow it way out of proportion. Like it's that you've seen this, this quote, did you really have a bad day or did you have a bad 10 minutes and you let that make your day bad? You know right. what I mean? Stuff like that. Catastrophizing is one of them. One of them is thinking with feelings and not facts mm -hmm. a lot. All the things that cognitive behavioral therapy teaches you to not do so you can cure yourself of post-traumatic stress or at least manage it. Modern society, particularly in universities, it's teaching kids to think that way as, as a fucking axiom. Like that's what they're trying to teach people to do. So this, it, it's called uh, a safetyism basically. Mm -hmm. 
it is out of fucking control. And I don't want our people to be subject to that stuff. You know what I mean? We're not trying to create a safe space for you somewhere else away from uh, divergent political ideologies. I don't give a fuck if somebody likes AOC and wants to have a conversation about that. Me neither. Even if they want to be a dick about it, I don't really care because I'll just be a dick back to them and we'll fucking solve it that way. Same. It's fine. But when Facebook steps in in the middle of it and says, you guys can't have that conversation, you know what you can do, Facebook, is suck my goddamn dick. Motherfucker, you don't get to tell me what conversation I can have no matter where I am. And luckily, there is other apps that are popping up where we can have, you know, the private groups and all that stuff in there. Because, uh, you know, if you're just a casual listener, look, with 10.3 million listeners for the show per month at this point, I think it's higher now because yeah, it's a lot everything that's, that, that we've gone through. A lot of people don't know that it was started by Jared Taylor on a private Facebook group. There is a private Facebook group called Drinking Bros. There's 110,000 members there. There is over 800 sub, uh, subgroups, and they were all private. Um, so if you want to go on there and say whatever you're going through, whatever you're feeling, there's Drinking Bros Dads, Drinking Bros Fitness, Drinking Bros Sports. Cigar aficionado, aficionado scotch. Auto racing. Addicts. Yes. Fucking fitness has, what, 27, 28,000 yes. members? Conspiracy theories. <clears throat> you name it, there is a Drinking Bros subgroup yeah. for it. And, and the even reason why they exist is... So you got you guys can have private conversations that dummies from the outside world can't get into and try to fuck it up or troll you or whatever it is. Yeah. And uh, and it's been great. Now, recently, they just deleted one drinking bro singles, um, which was, you know, shit, the safer way for people to meet each other and uh, have dates and fucking meet up and do all the other shit. I don't know what happened. But Facebook deleted that group. It is not us uh, and all this shit. It is purely Facebook. And uh, hopefully there is something else that opens up in the future, Facebook-wise. Podcast-wise, we don't give a shit mm. if they don't show the, the show on, on Facebook, right? Yeah. We were just trying to give people an easier option. Uh, you know, we're currently available on YouTube and Rumble and all of the things. And there is more coming, more apps coming and all that other shit. So... We're fine with that. Podcast-wise, audio, you can listen to the show everywhere. This is simply for, like, you know, just normal people who want to chat about like-minded things that they enjoy together. And uh, lately, it's been getting out of control on there. Um, th that conversation that we had mm -hmm. during fake news was a total accident. Um, we were just rapping about life, and it kind of came up. And then Jared was like, oh, hey, by the way, if you want to turn off the fucking data and privacy options on Facebook, here's how you do it. And then they nuked the feed and then yeah. they nuked everything else. Mm -hmm. Not only did they nuke the feed, but they revoked our, our credentials to go through restream to put it on there in the first place. Right. They didn't, they didn't just cut that episode off. Right, 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 they right, fucking right. booted us off that. We're, 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 we're getting back on it now, but man, I mean, that's, <clears throat> that's not good, man. It's a weird world we live in. Um, and those are, you know, some of the things that we wanted to address at the top of the show here, but uh, <laughs> the real meat and potatoes of today was um, I, I went on, Twitter last night to kind of answer everybody's questions and things like that from yesterday's show. And if you've seen that documentary on Netflix, I know we've said it a, a hundred times here with the, uh, what's the Facebook documentary that we've, the social dilemma. That's it. I mean, it's not a, it's, a, it's not a Facebook documentary. It talks about all social media. It talks right? about yeah. all social media, right? <clears throat> One of them on there was Twitter. We talked about this on a, on a past episode where Twitter only puts people in your feed that you hate or comments that you hate, right. which forges, forces you to rage against them, spend more time mm -hmm. there, rage treat against them or whatever. Um, mine last night was <clears throat> 80s ballad singer Richard Marks. Um, you all know Richard Marks. If you don't know Richard Marks, you've probably fingered a loved one uh, to Richard Marks. I'm not talking about a relative, maybe a relative. I don't know. Well, um, I... I told you this morning that I prom or I only fingered girls to insane clown posse songs. Right, 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 right. Which right. I feel like is an important thing to say. Not that I'm not even a fan. I just right. Just, you just you just it put just, it on. It seemed like the right thing to do <laughs> at the time. I'm not a fan of clowns either. <laughs> or posses. I, I like posses and insanity, but clowns not so much. Yeah, right? yeah. <clears throat> and I love fingering. So obviously. Obviously, um, he's a big fan of the Juggalos. Yeah, that yeah whole culture. I, you used how, to go every year. How did I, this is a good question? How did Juggalos end up as part of a terrorist watch list? I don't know. Like, it's just a bunch of fat neckbeards that are rejects from society that get together in fields, listen to weird music, and get drunk and high. I, like, and how they, is that a hate group? What do they do? They're not, like, fucking roving I gangs. Of, I think you just described the Capitol riot. 
Yeah, I, I mean, it's look, basically the same. It's basically the same thing. It's just like, hey, man, <clears throat> what are we doing? But and it's always re- peaceful. But they didn't really riot. Have you ever been? I, like, I had some friends that were super into their music back in the day, mm-hmm. and they would go to this stuff. And I'm like, what? What the fuck is this shit? And it's like, oh, it's just like a weird ass fucking loser festival. That's the way it was described to me. It's like people who are kind of like goth kids or rejects that like funny music, right? Would go there and hang out, and it's like a super. Uh, permissive and non-judgmental environment that's what i was told yeah, yeah like yeah. oh that's kind of stupid but it's fine if you like that i don't care i don't mind like it. Where, where are the stories of the, where are the stories of them like burning down cities and shit that's domestic terrorism i, I don't yeah I, never got I, don't, I don't get it either and it's like hey man it's look everybody listens to fucking weird music and they want to yeah. get together dude tyler the creator who I, <laughs> I i love um he does one every year i forget the name of it man he has his own fucking festival and they go bug fuck there um, and he does a bunch of weird shit. I watched it this year. He brought Drake out, which was a mistake because this crowd clearly only wanted fucking, um, Tyler, the creator. When Drake came out, that was too mainstream for them. And they flipped <laughs> out. They booed Drake off stage. A hundred thousand people booed Drake. The biggest fucking musician in the world, arguably. Off yeah, the stage. I mean, look, Dr- Drake is writing music by algorithm. We all know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but look. But a lot of people like it, so who cares? Yeah. I, and there was 100,000 people, and you figure, all right, shit, who gives a shit? But no, they were there for Tyler, the creator, his weird bullshit and everything else. Same with Insane Clown Posse. Like, let him get together and fuck shit up. I don't care. Uh, it seems like a blast. Shit, I'd go. I mean, um, if a bunch of people are getting together that you don't really like, and they're fucking each other up, either way, that seems fine. Yeah. Right? Like... Yeah, you're good. I don't. What's the problem? You're good. I think Dennis Leary used to talk about that. He goes, you're, so you're saying that heavy metal fans, unemployed heavy metal fans, are go, like going to concerts, listening to music, going home and killing themselves. Where's the problem? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's What's... a situation that is solving itself. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's Dennis Leary saying that. Yeah, I mean, not. I'm not, a metal fan. Not to Anthony. Uh, same here. <laughs> And, and I just, I don't care to get together and go to fucking Insane Clown Posse. They're not a terrorist group. I think we should have Insane Clown Posse on the show. I'd, I'd love to. Uh, we just wouldn't recognize them, you know? They, they'd <laughs> be in makeup probably. I'm just picturing this chick crab walking out of Dan's apartment in the morning. Is that what on you, screen right now? Yeah. Why would she be That's crab great. walking? I just like a demon kind of walk. Oh, you yeah, know yeah, what yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. I like that. I like no, that. Like, Insane Clown Posse is just kiss for rap. That's all it is. And That's they're not, is, I don't man. think they're Jews either. Like Insane Clown, they're probably not Jews, right? They're no. a bunch of white dudes from Michigan or some shit. Ah, you know, I don't know. Again, with well, it's, it's a clown makeup Violent on. J and some other stupid shaggy two dope. I think are the names. We did a we did the new guy watch along on our Patreon, Drinking Bros <clears throat> Podcast Patreon. Uh, Gene Simmons was in that movie, and I talked about that story. I didn't really know what he looked like without makeup on, and then mm. he ended up doing like a bunch of reality <clears throat> shows and shit. So I don't know what these guys look like without makeup on. That's the thing. When you're in a band where you wear fucking crazy makeup. I don't know what they look like. Yeah, they're from of, parts unknown, of course. No, they're they're <laughs> jo, Joseph. They're professional wrestlers. <clears throat> That's great. That they were a professional wrestler. Were they really? Yeah. That's awesome. <clears throat> Joseph Shit. Francis Bruce is is Violent J, and he's from Berkeley, Michigan. I don't know where that is. Um, I don't look. I don't know look where like near Detroit. Near Detroit. Um, I don't know where Richard Marx is from. But last night, when I opened up the old Twitter to answer all these fucking questions, um, there was a Richard Marx. Tweet staring me right in the bee hole. Uh, Rob, can you bring up that? Uh, just bring up my Twitter feed last night. This got fucking out of control. Uh, okay, so uh, I'll read the first tweet. So this is what showed up in my feed to hate everyone, right? He says, Hey, maggots, um, please give me one more example of a Democratic senator or governor who did the moral equivalent of Ted Cruz having his state in crisis while diverting crucial state's resources to do so and then lying about it one just one and i was like hey man what the fuck why why is this in my feet why does richard marx the 80s ballad guy hold on to the night Hold on to the memories. That guy. That's the fucking guy. <clears throat> Are we going to get flack for that? No. Well, my voice is pretty goddamn pitch perfect, maybe. What do you think, Hot Bob? Was that too identical? That That's, uh... I, I sounded like a guy who got his dick sucked by your aunt was in the room. Ooh, now we're getting crazy here. It's called tipping the joke in the biz, Hot Bob. But, uh, that's... So what happened was, I wrote him back and I just said, Hey, man. Um, you know, 
Uh, can you pull that up a little bigger here? Uh, That's what she said. Just maximize it. There we That's go. That's what she said. And it wouldn't be nice if you had a zoom feature on your dick. There, that'd be great. Just fucking turn it from <clears throat> three to, to it's enhanced to nine. Yeah, it enhanced. Enhance. So I said, uh, look, enhance. man, you told my aunt to suck your dick backstage at a show in 1987 at the Ohio Center because wouldn't that be a cool story to tell your friends? Now you want to talk about politics and moral high grounds. I'm not even mad about the beach, hombre. And that's, that's word for word. Um, just chill on the hacky political post, right? It was a one-off. I didn't really think about it. And then two minutes later, boom, he got back to me with this. Pop this up on the screen. Is that full screen? This is the best tweet of all time. Nothing will get better than this in my entire life. From Richard Marks. Your aunt is a liar. <laughs> Chill on perpetuating the lies. Like, does he, ombre. does he have a uh, subscription to Ancestry.com where he was able to identify all of your ants? <laughs> I have a lot this of ants. This woman never sucked my dick. Hell no, man. I've got a lot of ants. Some, like, are, some are dead. But to be fair, Richard Marks had his dick sucked quite a bit probably back in the 80s, right? You would think. Yes. Because he, he, his next few comments will illustrate one. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, so then my reply to that was Bill Clinton said the same thing. Oh, shit. He was a Democrat. Full circle moment on this one. Uh, we both just kind of answered your original question. Neat. You know, that's a neat thing. Uh, and he replies, but this kept going last night. He goes, here's the thing, dumb fuck. In 1987, I was a single 23-year-old in a rock band having hit after hit. If this were true, why would I lie now? It's you and your aunt." who I now doubt even exists, who are full of shit, you sad, pathetic troll. First of all, we dude. Don't, I don't feel sad about this. I feel very, I feel, I'm feeling a lot of joy right now. A lot of joy, one. Yeah. Two, <clears throat> but now you think that, that my aunt is made up. Um, well, it turns out she is. No, she's not. She's just no longer with us, but oh, whatever, she, Did man. she die from the blowjob? I can't. No, she did not die from the blowjob. <laughs> I've had a bunch of family members die and like, Weird ways, not going to get into it. Either way, um, this 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 one in particular is no longer with us. But still, to 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 question whether or not somebody's aunt is real or not, I don't know Richard Marks. Okay, I don't know him personally. We've never hung. We've never done any gator tales together. I don't know him. But what I do know is to question whether or not my aunt is real and is possibly given a, a blowjob in the eighties. Is a weird flex, Dan. Yeah, it's weird that uh, I've never heard a dude deny getting a blowjob 40 years ago. Yeah. That'd be a weird thing to deny, wouldn't Especially it? somebody who is, according to his words, having hit after hit. Yeah. Um, and then so my response was, my, my aunt was pretty hot, so I don't blame you for asking for a mouth hug. You miss 100% of the shots you don't take. John Wilkes Booth said that. Real talk, RM. And I just shortened his name to RM instead of Richard Marks. I didn't even call him Dick Marks, which I usually could have done that. I easily could have called him Dick Marks. I didn't. But I just said, politicians aren't stand-up people, and neither are you. Uh, I'm a fucking dirtbag. So stop putting these this, people on pedestals. To, to me, this is the funniest part, because he says, congrats, you got one thing right, you are a dirtbag. Like, that's some kind of insult. <laughs> Like, we've made a career <laughs> off being dirtbags, bitch. That's what we do here. And we've told people from day one, we are fucking dirtbags. And he says, show me where I've ever praised a politician or apologized and shut the fuck up. Also, your aunt may have been hot as fuck, but she's still a liar. I like still, how he's, he he's still calling your aunt a liar. Calling my aunt a liar. <laughs> your dead aunt, by the way. Right. So at this point, I go to his Twitter and I'm like, all right, cool, man. I could easily find, you know, something he said. Uh, so I went through it, dude, and he had fucking 55,000 tweets like a crazy person all about Donald Trump. So my response was I would, but there is literally 55,800 tweets on your page to try and read. And they all start with Donald Trump. Jesus, man. It's like trying to decipher Russell Crowe's garage in a beautiful mind. I'm going to hit up a friend of mine from Cambridge Analytica and get back to you. Now, I did hit up a friend. We have a bunch of friends who work for Cambridge. Uh, Hot Bob, <clears throat> do you have that tweet of, uh, uh, of the thing? Because there's another one in here where I talk about fucking, you know, believe all women in this. Um, and then, you know, uh, here we are. Richard Marks, old Dick Marks, 
March 30th, 2019. Sadly, it seems we live in the culture of believe women. Hashtag believe women. Unless it's something bad about the candidate I like. Right? That's how it works, right? That's how it works. Um, that Tara Reid woman for Biden. And that's funny for a liberal to post that because it is almost always leftists who sexually assault people like Bill Clinton, for example. Yes. A long history of sexually assaulting people. And then 27 times then his, his name wa- was listed on the flight logs. Yeah. Then his St. James Island yeah. for Epstein. Then his wife, who also almost became president, <clears throat> spent her spent most of the late 90s and the early 2000s like hiring private investigative firms to go after these women that accused him of shit. Right. Right. So what are we doing? The two leaders of your fucking party for the last 30 years are either a rapist or somebody covering up for a rapist. And you've got the audacity to say that shit. It's, it's unbelievable. It's crazy. And and look, I'm not saying the right is any better. We've had our fair share of dirt bags on the right as well. I just don't want to fucking post about how grandiose they are and how one side is the only side and everybody else can, can kind of get fucked because then then that just shuts down the dialogue. But that's what Twitter is. I don't, the reason why we're doing this show today is I don't expect to have an account anymore by Sunday. (laughs) It'd be awesome uh, if it is still there, but chances are somebody's going to get wind of this and fucking pop this down. He doesn't know. Richard Marks doesn't know. We have fucking 10.3 million listeners on this goddamn thing. Whatever. What I did say was inside the private drinking bros group, please go on there and ask him why he's denying a blowjob from my aunt. Um, Now she's no longer with us. To, to say that she she did or did not give this blow. Well, down. she isn't. She isn't. Yeah. If well, keep, if, keep, if you keep scrolling down, you're going to run <laughs> into an account called uh, Auntie Patterson. Yeah. Pull up uh, Auntie Patterson on Twitter. Keep on scrolling down there. Uh, uh, no, just pull it up. I, yeah. There's so many comments now at this point. <laughs> yeah. Um, this thing is really fucking taking AU, a life of AU, its own. Yeah, well, no, not Auntie Auntie. This is not. We're not fucking doing that, asshole. Yeah. Auntie Piece Patterson. No. Nope. There it is. Do you nope. say auntie or do you say auntie? No. Uh, you got to put it as one word, though. There it is. Scroll down. Scroll, Scroll down. Scroll down. There we go. Keep going. Right there. Ah, there it is. Yes. Uh, yes. Pull her up. Follow her, bub. She deserves it. She deserves it. So this is what, uh, I guess you can see it now. So somebody <laughs> started an Auntie Patterson account. Pull up that whole profile, actually. Um, that'd be great for Yeah, we, we need to see that picture. We definitely do. Of Auntie Patterson. There she is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who this woman is. Um, it's somebody's aunt and or mother or grandmother. grandmother yeah. And just know that we love you. I don't know who did this. I don't know who made this account. I don't have any affiliation with it. But it's really fucking funny. Um, now pull up the tweets from there. Uh, we'll just I'll actually start with the profile. So start with her profile. Um, so she, it's under anti Patterson. Follow her, Bob. Jesus, Bob. Why are you not following anti Patterson? I don't Dan still follow her. Click the, there we go. There we go. You need that in your life. Is that your account, Dan? Yeah, this is my account. You're killing my ratio right now. What do you mean? Is that going to fuck up your the algorithm? Follow to follow. Oh me. God. <laughs> Just shut up. I don't even know what the fuck that is. I follow whoever. I don't give a shit. Except Instagram. Cause I don't want to see my like, mom's pictures and shit. I don't, I, fo- I don't follow any moms. I don't want to see your kid 400 times throughout the day. Um, I have my own children and I love them. They're just not that interesting. Um, so under Auntie Patterson, the, and under the bio, uh, whoever did this, by the way, you're a fucking genius. It says, I am so proud of my nephew, Ross Patterson. Have you seen the new guy? He's the star of it. I sucked Richard Marx's dick <laughs> in 1987. <laughs> That's apparently a big part of uh, Auntie Patterson's uh, personality. Like she's 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 still living off that glory of sucking Richard Marks' dick back in 1987. By the way, he (laughs) said it would be a cool story. Yeah, in 1987, that's the year before uh, "Right Here Waiting for You" came out. (laughs) So maybe she was the inspiration for that fucking song, man. (laughs) I will be right here waiting Waiting for you. you. And in the back, if you turn down the instrumentals on that song and really listen, you can hear her gagging on Richard Marks' dick in the background. Um, it's part of the original soundtrack. They had to fucking turn the music up twenty percent to get it out. Part of the original soundtrack over there. So what did she, what did she re, what did she reply or what did this person reply? This is why we can't have nice things, by the way. Uh, probably. Um, <laughs> <laughs> she said, "Richard." Oh, this is under the your, your aunt is a liar. Uh, so she said, "Richard, I can't believe you don't remember me. I was backstage in 1987, and you put your dick in my mouth." 
I thought we made a connection. Anyway, how have you been doing? I hope well. Very polite. Very polite. Like, she's clearly not as angry about that blowjob as he is. No. And uh, I don't know if it's because he's married to Daisy Fuentes now, and he doesn't want her to know that he got some suspicious BJs back in the day. Uh, but you, I mean, you were 23 years old, dude. We've all fucked a fat old lady at 23, right? Richard, we're fine with it. Yeah. Here's the thing. And actually, Richard Marks, I'm going to fucking call you out and, and actually give you some props for marrying Daisy Fuentes. She's 54 years old and still a fucking smoke, smoke show, show, dude. She's hot as fuck. Yes. Way to go, Richard. But uh, I've got some bad news for you, Daisy. You're married to a little bitch. <laughs> So I don't know what you're going to do. Wherever you go. Do you think that's how he got her singing those songs? You know what's weird is Daisy. I wrote that song about you, Daisy. Like, well, you wrote that song 30 years before we met, Richard. Well, well here's, the, here's the thing, though. Um, when she was the, the VJ at MTV, that was probably the biggest music and shit. She probably had a crush on him, and that's great. Maybe, yeah. I mean, don't, don't marry your childhood idols, by the way. Eh, that's not or a, do. No, no. Or do. No, no. Who was your childhood idol? Female. Oh, fuck. It was Alyssa Milano. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Nailed it. God damn it. Could you imagine how we would have killed each other? Uh, no, she would have pretended to be dead, <laughs> which is very different. That's more of an AOC style trait. <laughs> Alyssa, if you guys had been married, Alyssa Milano oh, would be in an empty shit. parking lot somewhere taking a selfie of herself with her hand against a chain link fence. Like yeah. everything, yeah. everything these squad people do is basically the equivalent of a girl taking a picture of herself sleeping in bed next to her boyfriend. Yeah. Like, yeah. oh, like, the, the, have you you've seen those posts, right? Yeah. Like, who oh, took yeah. the fucking picture, bitch? <laughs> exactly. What, do you got a fucking photographer in your bedroom while you're sleeping? <laughs> no, you closed your eyes and took the fucking picture, mm -hmm. idiot. Mm -hmm. Nobody believes that shit. Um, but the beautiful part of, of this is, like, so there is this segment of 80s rock stars, like uh, Richard Marks and um, Rick Springfield is another one, who still tours, he does cruises. I just saw him on, like, Entertainment Tonight last week, for Christ's sake, and he's like, yeah, man. You know, through the <laughs> pandemic, I'm, I got, I'm writing two new albums. Those are coming out. Or oh, dude, I can't wait for the new Richard Marks album, said no one. Well, this is Rick Springfield. Oh, Hang Rick on. Springfield. I don't know who that is. So Rick Springfield was on General Hospital, and then he wrote uh, Jesse's Girl. So that was his mm. huge song, right? So um, he wrote one song. Then. Here's the thing. He's 71 years old. No one is looking for the new Rick Springfield album anytime soon or anywhere. No. But he's still booking cruises and all this shit. And it's all these... Women who are like diehard fans from the 80s, they sell out. Rick mm. Springfield lives a great life. Richard Marks appears, if he's with Daisy Fuentes, for Christ's sakes, lives a great life. I don't understand why you did <laughs> 55,823 tweets on no, Nobody that's Twitter. got 55,000 tweets is living a great life. I promise you that. Pull up, pull up Daisy mm. Fuentes today and Richard Marks. Yeah, pull, pull them up next to each other because clearly he's uh, either had his nose smashed in a vice or somebody's done some plastic surgery oh, to it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She looks great. <laughs> he looks like a goddamn alien now. I know. God, what a stupid cunt. Look at him. He looks like uh, Siegfried. He looks like he's got AIDS. Siegfried and Roy. Which is, Siegfried she probably looks had AIDS. Uh, like <laughs> fucking identical. Um, my God, Daisy Fuentes is held up. Yeah, she's hot. Man. Uh, Congratulations. By the Daisy way, 55,000 tweets. That's less than Chrissy Teigen deleted after being caught being a pedophile. <laughs> Is it really? She deleted like 63,000 tweets. Yeah. Do you remember uh, that? Hot Bob, shit. how many tweets did Chrissy Teigen delete? I think it was like 63,000. Yeah, I think it was, yeah, I, I heard it was a big number. I didn't know it was that high. Holy shit. Um, that's crazy. You may not be able to find it on Google search and you may have to go to DuckDuckGo because Google are a bunch of, bunch of cunts. 60,000. Uh, 60,000. Okay. Uh, hey, and pull up that last uh, shot. Go and back. look at look at the fucking glamour.com story. She deleted 60,000 tweets because she's worried for her family's safety. Yeah. What about those tweets would endanger her family? <laughs> exactly. It goes back to the same thing I said before. I am not in any way upset about when politicians are afraid of their constituents. No. Doesn't me bother me at all. If, you, no. if I was an elected leader right now, I wouldn't be afraid of anybody because, again, I would not have been fucking them over for years. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like you, you feel that guilt. If you've been fucking people over for years, you're like, oh, they're going to come get me at some point. Fuck, yeah, man. Yeah. It's like being a drug deal. You know you're going to either die or go to jail. That's what oh, being yeah. a politician's like now. Yeah. I'm just going to hang on until I say the wrong thing, man. And then, you know. We'll see what happens after that. Kinda, we'll kind of see what happens after that. But uh, <clears throat> um, I think Christy Teigen's tweets were about like little kids and shit. There was a lot of them about little kids, like toddlers and tears and some other shit. Yeah, do you remember uh, that whole thing with uh, Lena Dunham where she was apparently finger blasting her 11 year old sister? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And that's fine. What was no, it? No, like 11 month old sister. No way. Yeah. When she was a kid, though, when she was like eight or nine. 
gross. She admitted it in her book or something. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, pull up Daisy Fuentes in that bathing suit, Hot Bob. Um, there's a great picture of her. Daisy Fuentes, <laughs> dude, is... We can't say enough nice things about your wife, Richard. Well, so I mean, know she, that. she may be a piece of shit, too, but... Eh. Uh, uh, you're, it's forgive and forget on somebody like this. Look at that. Yeah. Wait, is she hiding a hog down there? What is that? Good for Daisy. Hog hiders. It's no, a new fucking bikini line no, I came out with for nice. <laughs> Daisy Fuentes. Chicks with dicks. I, I choke, can you can you say my white claw? I know you can't say tranny, but can you say chick with dick? Mm. No. I think mean, you can say that. Mm, it's unfortunate. I don't think you can say that. <clears throat> can I call a transmission a tranny still, or is that word just completely off limits? Uh, no, no, I think you're gonna have to call it something else. Um, somebody was it, I think it's uh, was it Andrew Schultz that did that bit where he was like, uh, uh, grandmother, mm -hmm. granny, granny, yeah, yes, yes, it is transgender, tranny. tranny. That's just kind of how we abbreviate words, folks. Yeah, it's not a pejorative. Uh, it is. We get a ton of big stories <sighs> after this, but uh, Richard Marks. We had fun. I've got a story right now, but let's do some sponsors. Yeah, first. we're going to do some sponsors, <clears> but uh, wherever you go, whatever you do, I will be right there waiting for you, Richard. And uh, Daisy Fuentes, call Dan Holloway if you, uh, you know, want to switch out of that. Uh, if you want to have beta. sex with a real man for the first time in your fucking life yeah. and not have a dude that has to fold his dick in half because he can't get erections, I'm your guy. I don't know. I'm not saying Richard Marks can't get erections. I'm saying that he can't get erections. Based on his hair, I'm saying he can't get erections. Because it takes too long? Or? No, because he's putting too much effort into his hair, which means mm. his dick doesn't work. Uh, Nobody uh, uh, whose dick uh, works puts uh, that much attention into their hair. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Uh, Daisy, though, man. Um, that's science. It is science. Yeah. Does she have a hot bob? While we're doing the sponsors, pull up Daisy Fuentes' Twitter. Does she, she have any crazy kids? Twitter? Does she have any kids? What's what's the shape of her vagina? See if you can find a picture of a butthole too. Yeah, uh, that doesn't exist out there. Oh, she's actually using Mark's last name. Daisy now. Fuentes Marks. Why? Ad Ad Daisy Fuentes. <laughs> you don't need the Marks, brother. Advocates for peace, love, and uh, uh, yeah. What does her what's animal, her thing say? Animal rights. Go to her bio. Okay, so she has a new podcast with her husband. It's called Tequila Talk. Oh God, that's awful. Oh boy. Okay, Jersey girl, model, mogul. Uh, TV personality, author, philanthropist, Look, hopeless romantic, advocate I love, for peace and love and animal rights. I love animals as much as anybody else. Uh, they're fun to play with, cuddle, eat, mm -hmm. whatever. Uh, if, you're an, if you're spending your time as a human being, being an animal rights activist, yeah. while people are starving, human beings are starving to death, you got to go. You have to get off of my <laughs> fucking planet. Get out. We don't have time for that shit. We have more important things. Can you imagine... Your house is on fire, and the fire department shows up, and your kids are in there, and you're like, fucking save my kids, and they run in and come out with a parrot. Yeah. We got the parrot, man. No. No, dude. you don't. You don't You don't got the parrot. God um, damn it. Let's pull up their podcast. I'm going to pull up their podcast here real quick. Do they have a- Oh, I'm sure it's great. Well, okay. She posted audio from the first- Like, there's this clip as, uh, I assume- a, Great. A so, I'm, I'm looking at it. She Years ago, I, was, I did a tour. A yeah, play it. Okay, hold on. Let me uh, make sure there's no music in it, but play it. it Wow. Summer tour with the amazing Ringo Starr. You did a tour this week on Tequila Talk. Um, you do the best, Ringo. Uh, I can't and, do it because my voice is on, 100%. But listen and they to all start voice. the same, which is oh. Hi, Rich. It's Rich. Hi. <laughs> because his name is Richard Starkey. I don't know what burns my ass. Tell me what burns your what <laughs> burns Daisy's ass. <laughs> Karen's oh. gone wild. Karen's gone wild. Hashtag Karen's Gone Wild. Well, racist Karen's Gone Wild. Check out new episodes of Tequila Talk with Daisy Fuentes and Richard Marks every Wednesday, oh, right man. here on Straw Hut Media. They well, are just so disgusting. They're such disgusting. Like, what is it that makes these women go to 11 like that? What is happening? That's, oh, that's horrible. If you boy, didn't want to kill yourself boy. before, you sure as shit do now. do now. And if you do know that we understand after that. Yeah. Here's the offer that I'll make, the olive branch that I will extend. If if Daisy and Richard want to come on air and talk about my aunt's blowjob in 1987, um, I'll be, we'll be happy we'll, to host you and we'll promote, to, to, to what is it, Tequila and Talk? We'll promote that show on the tequila. air. Talk Talk Tequila. The only problem tequila with this. Tequila Talk. They I don't, and tequila. Dude, I don't, I don't really fucking go arrogant too much but like the oh God, how do i how do i wear this without sounding like an asshole the slowness in their voice i would fucking steamroll these people in a goddamn interview and it would it would just be a nightmare and i would come off like a fucking cocksucker know this 
I will treat you with respect. I will talk as slow as you will. And then I, 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 uh, <clears throat> I think we should have John Edward on. Remember that guy? The, uh, the psychic, psychic medium? Yes. So he can bring your dead aunt back and so she can describe the real job. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is a family show. I'll get Teresa <laughs> Ju- Judice on the show and fucking talk about it. Uh, and Richard, like, dude, there's a bunch of like everybody in my like <clears throat> like in my family's dead for some reason off of one one weird thing. Dad, uncles, uh, grandparents, all that shit. So I'm not. And, and it wasn't like murders or something violent or whatever. It was like weird things where they were just like, oh shit, they checked out. Like nothing, nothing bad, nothing whatever. So. Yeah, you got fucking blown by a dead person. Who cares? Who fucking cares? Well, she wasn't dead at the time. No, she was that's alive. An, that's, she was a alive. Di- that's a different story. She was alive at the time. Yeah. She was alive at the time. Um, um, yeah, let's do some sponsors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're going to love... Ghostbed loves these segues, dude, from, from dead people's blowjobs to... They've been tolerating it for a long time. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 yeah. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, first and foremost, ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. 40% off the bundle packages. So if you get an adjustable base uh, and a mattress together, you get 40% off. Just type in the promo code Drinking Bros at checkout. Um, look, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I've, uh, I've, I've lost a mattress, Rich. And I'm going to be ordering a new one in the adjustable base. It is all flooded out. And uh, I got I to get it. I can't sleep on anything else besides the goddamn ghost bed anymore. So they've got, you've got me hooked. Um, so ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today, uh, mattresses, sheets, all, all of the things, the pillows, everything is so goddamn nice there that I need it again. Uh, cause it, it's all flooded out and it's gone. Uh, so I'm going to be, uh, ordering that real soon. And as always, they got a 36 month page to go program. No interest there at ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros. So fucking hop on it, dude. Uh, 35 bucks a month. You're in and out the door, dude. Three years, no interest, blah, blah, blah. It's amazing. It's fucking amazing. Go to ghostbed.com forward slash drinking bros today. Drinking bros at checkout. Uh, next up, cardomax.com. We're having it. We're drinking it right now. Um, it goes really good with uh, White Claw and vodka. Yes. Yes, it does. Um, Just so, in case you were wondering. Can't recommend <clears throat> that enough. Um, actually, shit, I'm out. Um, Energy intensifier. Uh, Hot Bob, would you, would you mind uh, grabbing me just a solo cup? Maybe Why don't you just use that drinking bros sports glass right there? A little bit of ice in it. Uh, is it clean? I doubt it. No, me neither. That's why I wasn't going to use yeah. it. Nothing's clean here. No, nothing. Nothing. Every, people clean. are fucked in here. People are living in here. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> dogs, children. Every, every, everything is in here. Not that we care, obviously. We're a fucking office for the people. We don't give a mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, this place has been a hotel for the last Although, week. Although, who is it? Was that Gary Bregman that yeah. came in? God damn it, man. Just just email us. You know, give us a heads up, right? Child was down. He was watching Coco Melon, and then he busy. rolls in, and he sh- he heard you know. there were some uh, some illegals here. He came to beat him up. <laughs> <laughs> he came just to kick him in the chest. Just give us an email or a text. That's all we're asking for. Um, and then you can show up. We don't really care. I just put the two or year old if, down. Yeah. Or if you come in and you see the two year old, you have to. <laughs> you have to put him back to bed. It's like when you come into somebody's house and you open the door, you don't just leave the door open. You close it. Yes. So if you come to somebody's house and you wake up the kid, you got to put the kid back to sleep. Exactly. That's the way it is. Uh, stay on Dan single here while we do the next sponsor so I can, I can grab the Tito's from him. Yeah. Uh, next up, uh, we got KillCliffCBD.com. Yeah, KillCliff is uh, it's my fave. We, well, it's not just CBD. KillCliff uh, does a lot of different products, but... We focus on the CBD. I've been mixing it with uh, all sorts of stuff. Vodka. Actually, we've got two, four cases on the way right now. I just got one of each of all the four flavors. Of, uh, of uh, Kill Cliff? Well, I got all the ones except for mango. I got Strawberry Days. I got uh, the uh, Cereal Grapist or Grapist of all time. Uh, that's my favorite. Uh, I got... Oh, uh, shit, that Flaming Joe. I, I want to I I rephrase. I, I think got, the Flaming Joe is taking over, by the way. It's really good, yeah. I got Flamin' Joe and I got uh, the Orange Kush, so I got all four of the, those flavors. I didn't get mango because I fucking forgot, to be yeah. honest. I, just, I like mango. It's fine. I, I like mango. It's just, look, yeah. I go, I'm one of those people, though, that I only get my faves. Like, I get them in, like, dude, at my house, it's just, it's grape, and yeah. then it's uh, it's the Flamin' Joe now that has taken over my house, personally. Um, I love it. Go to KillCliffCBD.com today. 25 milligrams of CBD in every single can. You will not piss hot. Uh, there's no THC in this. 
Killcliffe is literally the only name you can trust as far as drinkables go. Otherwise, man, I, I can't guarantee what's in it. And, uh, you know, everybody's using CBD as an alternate for weed and all that other shit. We have a lot of military and first responders. We wouldn't fuck you guys over, man. There's no THC in this. Joe Rogan is also, uh, he has his own flavor there. So he wouldn't do that to you either. 20 calories a can. 30% off with the promo code Drinking Bros and free shipping at KillcliffeCBD.com. It is amazing. Uh, last but not least, Danthony, uh, you want to you want to give some love to Harry's, dude? I I'll, I want to give some love to Harry's today. I'll tell you why. Um, I was if you saw the yes the episode yesterday, it was black and white. That's all we could do. Um, and uh, as we got the powers back up, waters back up in here, we're good to go. Um, but uh, uh, I couldn't shave or fucking shower for eight days. Really want to thank my neighbors, uh, the Cavenders. Uh, Michael and Carrie, you saved my life. They said, hey, man, they let me come over. I said, we got a show today. I can't, I can't look like this on camera. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> I had to shave. and uh, cause I, don't, I can't grow a sweet beard like Dan. It's just it's patchy. I can, I can get a, an awesome mustache and a soul patch, but that's about it. The rest of it is, is horrific, and it looks like shit. Uh, if it looked as cool as Dan's, I would do it, but I can't. Therefore, I had to shave. The only thing I had on me yesterday was the fucking Harry's thing. Um, so at harrys.com, I had the kit. It was already packed to go back to North Carolina. It's $3. That's it. Uh, go to harrys.com slash drinking bros, H-A-R-R-Y-S.com slash drinking bros to get a Harry's starter set and free body wash for $3. So all this shit was in there. I just took it over to the house, shaved with it. Uh, it's got shaving cream, uh, body wash. I took a shower for the first time in seven days. That was nice. Uh, again, thank you to the Cavenders and thank you to Harry's.com. Three bucks. That was it. Now, this is while supplies last. Last time we had them on the show last year, it sold out in like, I don't know, a week. Or a record time. Yeah, and I it was... get it, man. The products are fucking amazing. You, you, you get the grip and all that other shit. It's the, even if you just want a travel kit to travel with, get this and try it out. So for a limited time, Harry's has an exclusive offer for listeners. Uh, new customers can get a Harry starter set and a free body wash for just $3 at harrys.com slash drinking bros. Um, it's over like a 16, $20 value for three bucks. Uh, you'll get a five blade razor, a weighted handle, foaming shave gel, a travel cover and a travel size body wash. It's, it's an incredible deal, but again, it's while supplies last, they go pretty fast. Go to harrys.com slash drinking bros to redeem your offer today and then uh cardo max by the way promo code db oh yeah buy one <clears throat> get one there so here it is it's, Bogo, it's, it's right here it's just a little pouch boom boom yeah. uh you rip it open and squeeze it we've been drinking vodka and uh and soda with it and then boom a splash of cardo max you're good to go energy intensifier dude i need it on a day like this man it's just been me and my two-year-old uh i got a flight out tomorrow Give but it to the two-year-old. Two Oof. Could you imagine? <laughs> he would go nuts. Yeah, dude. he would not do well with that. <laughs> you wouldn't think so, right? It's no, child. no. It wouldn't do well drink. with it. Mm -hmm. I am, uh, and it's been keeping me going. So shout out to Cardomax. It's C-A-R-D-O-M-A-X dot com. Promo code D DB. It's just DB. Um, and it's buy one, get one. So you get a whole bag. Get a whole bag of this. Boom. Buy one, get one. You're good to go. And it's Sean Matson's company. Um, mm -hmm. You know Sean from the show. <coughs> Navy SEAL, uh, great dude. He's been on numerous times. Uh, so you're supporting a veteran-owned company. And Sean, let's face it, uh, is great. So go there now. Go to cardomax.com, promo code DB. It's there. <coughs> uh, All right. Let's talk about General let's get into Lloyd it. Austin. Let's get into it. General Lloyd Austin is the new Secretary of Defense. Mm -hmm. Right. About a month ago. Uh, for those of you that don't know... <coughs> uh, General Lloyd Austin was the he was a commander in Fort Bragg for a while. I think a third BCT. <clears throat> then he went on to become the uh, 18th Airborne Corps commander. For those of you that don't know what that is, the 18th Airborne Corps is in charge of the 82nd Airborne, 10th Mountain, 3rd ID, a number of other units, 4th PSYOP, I think some some other units. Anyways, uh, he was a commander there, and uh, now is going to be the Secretary of Defense, heavily invested in Raytheon. Mm. Right? Why is that? Because he knows people in the 
when, when you're a general like that, you have a lot of sway and a lot of contacts over the people that make purchasing decisions in Washington for the military. So you go work for Raytheon, you get Raytheon awarded a bunch of contracts, and that's exactly what he did. Okay. Right? <clears throat> but a month ago, uh, he pledged to recuse himself from military decisions involving Raytheon. Now, we all know that's bullshit. That's the same as anybody in Congress or Senate saying they're not going to use the information they get to trade stocks, mm-hmm. which we know that everybody on every side of the aisle did. Republicans and Democrats both dumped all kinds of stocks right before COVID because they knew it was coming. Yeah. Right? And there's no law against that, by the way. There's no such thing as insider trading when it comes to that. Which is crazy. It is crazy. Yeah. And there's no rule that says this guy had to recuse himself from military decisions involving Raytheon just because he had worked for him. There's no, nothing, there's no rule that says he has to do that. So, man, about a week ago. You seem really frustrated by this, by the I'm, way. I'm frustrated because uh, people, it, we see it with this Ted Cruz thing. People refuse to apply the standard if it applies to somebody on their political side. That's just how it is. People are defending Ted Cruz, trying to say, well, what Cuomo did was worse. Like, yeah, it was worse. So what are we having, a shitbag competition? Are we just calling out shitbags? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought we were just calling out shitbags here. I didn't know it was a fucking competition. Yeah. Anyways... Uh, about a week ago, the Biden administration awarded an $85 million contract to Raytheon, even though they did not deserve it. Um, they also allowed Raytheon uh, to be one of the primary players in a new missile defense system and blah, blah, blah. Here's the real problem. About a month ago, a little, little less than a month ago, Raytheon uh, said there, there's a, they were trying to sell this missile defense system to Egypt, right? Mm-hmm. And they were like, yeah, the administration is definitely going to block this. So they started doing other stuff. Well, it turns out that uh, the administration allowed it. So the rolling airframe missile was requested by the Egyptian Navy to improve their coastal defense. $200 million worth of equipment was allowed to be sold from Raytheon to the Egyptian government. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know if you paid attention back in 2012 or since the Egyptian government isn't exactly an ally to us no, or I, to their own people. I was, yeah, I was going to say I was unaware that they had a government in place that could actually govern right now. Right. Because it seems to be a lot of, of violence still. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So the Biden administration has been talking since before they were even inaugurated about how they're going to start limiting uh, uh, military spending to Saudi Arabia. Right? Correct. Yes. They haven't done that either. And they've, they've now increased spending and funneled money to this company in Egypt. So a month ago, I, I just want to set the timeline here. A month ago, people are floating General Lloyd Austin as Secretary of Defense. He has to go in front of the Senate Armed Forces Armed Services Committee and, and oh, I would, I would recuse myself from any kind of decision on that. And then a bill that would allow Egypt to buy hundreds of millions of dollars worth of offensive weapons which even Raytheon didn't think they would get. Mm -hmm. Their guy gets in as Secretary of Defense and they immediately get the goddamn contract. Are you fucking kidding me? Are you fucking kidding me? But in your experience, because you were overseas a lot during a lot of this fuckery that went on, right? Um, Were you over there for the Enron shit or the Donald Rumsfeld shit or... Uh, no, when I, when I deployed, well, yeah, I, I was a little bit. Yeah, you were. Okay. I, I, my, my deployment started late. Oh, seven. So Bush was still present when I deployed. And, and, and the reason why I ask <laughs> is this, did you I'm know sorry, early Oh seven into mid Oh eight late okay. Oh six is what I meant. Um, so, so let me, this is why, here's where I'm going with this. Did you know when you were over there, like all this shit was going on and what you were doing? I knew before I went there. Was oh, you on. did. Yeah, for sure. I mean, no it's shit. It's, 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 it's American politics. Look, <clears throat> Was it 1953, the CIA helped overthrow the democratically elected government of Iran and install the Ayatollah Khomeini? Mm -hmm. And that's worked out, right? It was a democracy before that, right? Yes. And it was one of the most westernized Middle Eastern countries that exists. Now it's one of our primary enemies in the world. Because of us. Not because of them. It was because of us. Right. Same thing with Afghanistan. Watch the, the movie Charlie Wilson's War is kind of reductive, but the main point that they make, which is that the Mujahideen was a fighting force that needed help defeating the Russians. We helped them. And then instead of staying there and building schools, we left and they built madrasas and the Taliban took over. 
Same thing happened in Saudi Arabia. We helped them prop up fucking all this stuff. And then 83% of all elementary or primary schools in Saudi Arabia are madrasas. Madrasas teach death to America. 83% of the schools in Saudi Arabia, that's what they teach. Egypt is run by the Muslim Brotherhood, which teaches the same thing. Now we're giving them $200 million worth of offensive weapons, and they're this close to Israel. So all you motherfuckers out there that think that America is somehow an ally for Israel or whatever the fuck, you're out of your goddamn mind. This isn't about Biden. It's not about Trump. It's not about any of these fucking people. Every U.S. president forever, at least since Eisenhower, has sucked the dick of the Middle East constantly because we want that fucking oil. That's all it is. Well, with everything going on, I just had this conversation with my parents because we're, uh, and, and you, shit, too, because we're, we're, we were looking at those Hummers and everything else, right? What I was unaware of um, was how many electric vehicles are coming out, right? Yeah, uh, but electric I, vehicles are coal-powered, by the way. Most of the energy that you get to, to charge up your electric vehicle is from coal. It's not, it's, it's not magic electricity. It's, to- not, totally. it's, not, it's not wind or solar, so they're not really electric cars. No, 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 I, and, I, and I understand that, but do we need the Middle East no. For oil, mm. okay. No. Um, because that's where I was going with this. Like, Oil uh, does a lot more than just fuel vehicles, by the way. It also makes plastics and all sorts of other shit. But will we need them as much, I guess? <laughs> we don't, we I'm don't, trying to figure it out. Even, without, even if we ran our vehicles at their current rate, we don't need the Middle Eastern oil. Like Dick Cheney... Oh, what the fuck? Dick Cheney caught a lot of heat because we wouldn't tap in to our strategic oil reserves. Mm-hmm. And instead, we kept fighting these wars all over the Middle East to secure better oil rights. Actually, <clears throat> what they say is, what these politicians say is, well, the Middle East needs to be stable because if not, OPEC will charge more for, for oil and that we don't want to pay more for oil, so we have to fight these wars. And they justify it saying we have, we're fighting wars to maintain our way of life. It's not true. It's not true because we can easily tap into the oil that we have here already. Same thing with lithium. Everybody's like, oh, we got to fight in Afghanistan because of lithium, or we have to fucking be aware of Venezuela and, 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 and Brazil because of lithium. No, we have the fourth largest deposit of lithium in the world. We're the only country that has multiple private industries trying to go to space to mine lithium right now. We don't need any of this shit. All this is doing is making fucking Raytheon, Northrop Grumman, General Dynamics, and all these other cunts rich, period. And it's your life, my life, that gets fucking taken for it. So I'm done with this shit. Fuck, fuck that fortunate son stuff. It's not about... <clears throat> it's not about that class warfare shit, necessarily. It is about these rich, powerful assholes. They don't give a fuck about life at all. And they, they've, they've, they've done so much at this point that they feel like they can get away with anything. Yes. Right. Well, because they keep doing it, right? So, yeah. you know, I, I, and it's a, I, I hate to keep harping I, on I it. I say it's not about class warfare, and the only reason I say that, because technically it is class warfare, but half the people in this country are on board with it. And it's not always the same half. With the Biden administration in, people will defend this decision. People on the left will defend this decision. If it was Bush doing it, people on the right would defend this decision. Right. You're full of shit. Fuck you. Um, the, the reason I... Uh uh, I wanted to chat about it, like especially the oil shit. Was um, you and I on the show have laughed about getting those new Broncos forever, mm-hmm. right? Well, it turns out they're finally fucking here. So I went to they, I need to fill out the paperwork and say, hey, are you really going to buy this? I was like, yeah, man, I'm really going to buy this. They're expecting them, I think, by the end of June. Well, mm-hmm. while I was there waiting, because it it took about an hour to process the paperwork and and all that shit. Um, they were like, hey, man, can we, you know, interest you in looking at this electric vehicle? And I was like, ah, shit, I was unaware that you had any coming out. What are they? Mm. And uh, uh, it was a Mustang. It's called a Mach-E. Um, and it was pretty affordable. It was $42,000. All electric. Dope as shit. <laughs> I get to go on the inside of it. Um, it was a dealership out in Buda, Texas, mm. uh, which is kind of uh, halfway between my office and the house. And like, um, I was like, oh, my God, dude, this is nice. Like, I've been in Tesla. It feels like a Tesla. This is fucking crazy nice and I, and they were like yeah man it goes to like zero to 60 in like three seconds and all that other bullshit and everything else and i was like holy shit i was like <clears throat> it finally starts to feel like the future is here because with a tesla a bit, yeah with a tesla you're on a wait list and good luck getting one and, and everything else and there's a, a charging station everywhere else all these cars that you and i are looking at and everything else for the future not the bronco yet but are somewhere between four and five hundred miles with one charge yep. The faster we can get out of the Middle East, in my opinion, the better. And it's like, well, again, it's not about being able to. It's about the will to. It's not the same thing. So we're not. It is. I don't think it's right 
or ethical to fight wars over resources in the first place. Me How, either. However, however, yeah. if it were necessary, then when I say necessary, I mean, if there was a legit lack of oil and we had to have it and somebody wouldn't give it to us, I mean, it's a matter of survival at that point. I guess in some ways you could justify that, but that is not the case. It's not a matter of survival. It's a matter of oil and gas profits. That's it. And I'm not talking about the, the people who work in oil and gas in the United States. I'm talking about companies that import oil from other countries and refine it from other countries. It's about, it's about Halliburton and Raytheon and General Dynamics and all these other motherfuckers, right? And if you're a Republican right now and you're feeling, you're feeling slighted by this, like, I can't believe Biden would do this. It was George Bush and Dick Cheney that did it, motherfucker. The same guys that ex- that's presided over the largest expansion of the federal government in U.S. history. But it just keeps going, right? It'll always keep going, yeah. But e- even with uh, Reagan and the, the Iran-Contra. Con- it but- wasn't just Iran-Contra. Reagan raised taxes 13 times during his eight years in office. He also saw a, th- a 3X in the national debt, tripled the national debt during his time in office. Now... To be fair, one of the things he was trying to do was break the back of the Russian economy, and it worked mm-hmm. because the wall fell and Russia fucking doesn't exist in the same way it did before. <clears throat> but was it worth it? Was it worth it to do that and continue to pile on the national debt? So it's a confluence of factors. The Republicans did that. Meanwhile, on the left, with welfare reform in the early 90s with Clinton, there was no real reform. They just gave out more money. Right. You know what I mean? So instead of conservatives doing what conservatives do, which is be conservative economically, they said, fuck it, all the way back in 1981, my birth year, by the way, hey. and tripled the national debt over the next eight years. And then Clinton had a, he, there, he had two budget uh, surpluses, I believe, mm-hmm. in 96 and 98, maybe. I don't remember what years it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. But the, I believe the national debt rose under him as well. And then the largest expansion of the federal government in history happened in 2002 with the Department of Homeland Security, right? So neocons, if you want to call them that, have continued to spend and spend and spend. And leftists have continued to spend and spend and spend and spend and spend and spend. And now we're fucked. So let me ask you a, a giant overall question here because this is the one that i have always wanted to have answered if we end up switching to electric and we don't need the middle east for oil right Mm -hmm. can we ever get our fucking troops just out of there and let them fucking blow each other up and, and not deal with this anymore because that's truthfully for me personally that's really all i care about um because everybody yourself included who has been on this show and who has fought overseas has said, man, I don't know what we were fighting for. Well, I'll tell you this. Me personally, in my late teens, early 20s, when I'm, when I'm looking at the news and I see people being victimized by despots and failed states, I want to do something about it. Mm-hmm. But America can't do that. It cannot be America's job to do that. Me personally, I want to go do something about that the same way if somebody was bullying somebody right here, I'd fucking knock their ass out. You know what I mean? But the country itself can't do that. The implications are too, too great. It just can't, it cannot work that way. It's not, it's not none of our business because as JFK said, uh, uh, I'll support any friend and defend or, uh, and, uh, and fight any enemy to ensure the success and continuation of Liberty or whatever the fuck it's, I'm paraphrasing, but, uh, We haven't even gotten to the point in the United States where everybody has the same liberty. You know what I mean? We went from uh, uh, only white male landowners being able to vote to black dudes that could then vote in the 1920 women could vote. And then Jim Crow was involved there. So what rights black people did have were essentially unexercisable, including the GI Bill. And, you know, until... The 1970s, really, it wasn't even close to a level playing field. 70s to late 90s, it was a little closer. And lately, it's we've seen the wage gaps between certain, like, I mean, look, Asian males in this country make more per capita than any other group of people. 
And now there's a thing called Asian privilege, by the way, which is... Is it really? Yes. Ridiculous. But we can't even get our own shit together. We have anywhere from 70 to 150,000 homeless veterans on any given night in this country. So the idea that we would go outsource our fucking ethics and morality somewhere is a fucking joke to me, right? So in our lifetime, do we ever get out of the Middle East and get our troops out of there? No. No, not unless we have uh, a complete shift in the balance of power in America. When I say the balance of power, I mean uh, completely dissolve our current system of government. Representative democracy doesn't work at this scale. It obviously doesn't work. I mean, I hear politicians say they're not fucking representatives. They're, they're, they're uh, uh, whatever the fuck else. Like, it's not my job. I literally heard a politician say this. I'm, I'm not a representative. I'm a trustee of the will of the people. So I, I want to know what they think, and then I go exercise that somewhere. No, you're not. It says representative in your fucking name, asshole. So, you know, unless we get rid of the idea that... 538 people are going to decide 538 plus the vice president and president. So 540 people decide everything for us all the time. 540 people decide everything for 330 million people. That's ludicrous, right? The last, any, any time in human history, you've seen that, whether it's Rome or fucking Gaul or the British empire, you've seen or French empire, you've seen revolution violently because at some point, Affluent fucking people that are out of touch telling the plebs what to do under threat of force causes violence. It's just the way it is. So at this point, I'm kind of resigned to the fact that there's going to be violence at some point. And I'm just kind of waiting for it to happen, to be honest. Yeah, but it's such a fucking heavy statement that we will never, ever get our troops out of there. How many years has it been now that we've been over there? I mean, if you count the British Iranian oil, or, yeah, the British Iranian oil company. 75, 80 years. It's never, we're never leaving. No. Not, not a chance. Fuck. It'll never happen. Even if, even if, uh, I mean, you see it with Afghanistan. The reason Afghanistan is strategic territory is one, because Russia wants to build an oil pipeline to Europe. And two, because there's a shit ton of unmined rare earth metals everywhere. In Afghanistan, Uzbekistan, all the stands, basically. There's yeah, yeah. plenty of stuff there and it's easy to mine provided you can secure the region. So <clears throat> I guess you have to ask yourself if it's ethical for the U.S. government to send 19 and 20-year-old men and women to go fight and die so that private companies in the U.S. can make billions of dollars in profits off of rare earth metals in Afghanistan, provided we can keep it secure. And notably, we have the fourth largest reserves of those things in the world already. I think it's unethical. I think it's. I think it's. I think the U.S. is becoming quickly becoming a failed state, and I have no faith in our leadership at all. No, no, uh, me neither. And you know, I, t- I talked about this a little bit on RPR the other night, where I was just like, "Look, besides your friends, family, um, and your neighbors, at this point, like, it's hard to uh, to try to ask for help for anybody yeah. else or expect the best out of anyone else." Uh, however. Uh, we expect the best out of people from the drinking bro of the week, which is that point in the show here. Again, we read these live on air. Go to drinkingbros.com and uh, we have some Buttersoft teas on there for nineteen ninety nine if you want one. And you can also leave a free just drinking bro of the week and it, it gets sent to us. We don't know what it is. We read it live on air, so I'm going to open this one up now. Uh, let's see here. Aaron from Florida has been a member of Drinking Bros for five years. Um, is nominating Count Dracula. It is real. Uh, he taught me how to count, but obviously skip Dan's house because that dude cannot count. Highlanders lock shields. What the fuck is this guy? <laughs> no, that's real. This is real, by the way. I think we need to have some what kind is, of... What is Highlanders lock shields? I don't know what that is. I don't know what Highlanders lock shields... <laughs> There can be only one Highlander, I guess. Is he, are we trying to, is this guy trying to fight me to the death or some shit? 
<laughs> Wait, so, what's his name? Uh, his name is Aaron from Florida. By the way, if you don't believe we read these live on air, that we do because they they just get emailed to us, so I just pull them up. So whatever it is, it is, and I don't we don't free screen them because we don't want to leave anybody out. Yeah. Holy shit, dude! That's really funny. But he went he went through the trouble to say, dude, I've been a drinking bro listener for five years, and he's nominating Count Dracula. Well, look, I mean, because he taught me how to count, um, and then Count Dracula, <laughs> you know. May have, for that young generation, popularized vampires so much that Interview with a Vampire was successful, which also led to other things that uh, are good, but it also led to Twilight. Twilight, you know I mean? yeah, yeah. Which is not good. No, no. Uh, um, and now he's the new Batman. Yeah. So, uh, so that's really I'm still hopeful about Robert Pattinson as Batman, by the way. Uh, I mean, Batman is, Batman's fucking emo, dude. I don't know why you think he's not. I'm not. His Go whole ahead. career is based off his parents dying. Go ahead. Uh, how about, oh, uh, you know Highlanders lock shields appears to be maybe what the first LARBN association. I, the, Dan, I don't know. You, you're the military guy here. What the fuck is this? This is all I could. I couldn't even find anything from Google. Really, I had first to, uh, LARBN is is uh, first Marine uh, Lurse or some shit. Probably I don't know what LAR stands for in, in the Marine Corps. Uh, Sir, reconnaissance, sir, reconnaissance surveillance yeah yeah long range it's probably LERS the, the, the army version of that is LERS so all, no LAR is light armored vehicle maybe or some shit I don't know I don't know anything I don't know Marine Corps stuff but their badge that you're showing there has an uh, LAV put it up on screen on. Uh, at least for the for the people to light see armored here. reconnaissance right. battalion that's what it is <clears throat> okay. alright so the guy's a Marine Corps guy a LAV 25, okay, with a fucking 25 millimeter gun on it, yeah. Camp Pendleton, so he was, uh, that's 1st Marine Division. Um, so maybe he wasn't challenging me, he was just saying the motto from his unit. <laughs> maybe next time qualify that same, because look, if you want to, I don't really want to fight with shields and swords, though, that seems like a lot of work. It's, it's, you know how heavy those goddamn swords are? Can you imagine? Exhausting. Being a fucking, uh, uh, like being in a Roman phalanx or something like that. Yeah. And you're in the front line, right? So in the front line, you've got a sword and a shield. Yeah. And you're blocking and the second row behind you are the first spearmen, right? And they're cu- jumping over you and spearing people. And yeah, then dude. you move the phalanx forward or backwards and then you switch out with the fucking third row of shields. A lot of work. I mean, it's a, I'm not doing any of that. It's a just a hockey exertion. line. Yeah. Right? They, they play for a well, minute. It's, and it's more they... like a rugby scrum than a hockey line, yeah. to be honest. But yeah, it's it's stupid. I'm not doing any of that. But these guys, you were a fucking tank driver. You were hiding inside of a big piece of metal. Oh, that's hilarious. Motherfucker. Actually, fuck that. I would rather be on foot than be in one of those LAVs because they get blown up all the time. Okay. I would always rather be on foot. Even though some of our interpreters, this one guy in particular, uh, went colloquially by Chris. No Chris is in, the, in Iraq, by the way. Uh, <laughs> his real name was Muhammad. But one day we were walking down the street and like, hey, you think that's an IED? We should call in uh, a demo team and check it out. He goes, I don't know. Let me go check. And he just walked over there and kicked it. I'm like, what the fuck is wrong no with you? No way. Yes. That was a regular occurrence. Away. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm not. <laughs> not doing that. Get your legs and balls blown off. I'm all set, brother. Yeah. Um, look, I, along with uh, Count Dracula, who I respect and love, I'm going to give my own here um, simply because they, they helped me out here. Uh, Walt Smith, uh, the county commissioner of Hayes County. He's actually my neighbor. And uh, he helped fucking... Get thousands of, of pounds of water out of my house, along with the Cavenders, Michael and Carrie. A lot uh, of people in Texas have been very helpful. Tim yes. Kennedy's been helpful. Jesse James uh, bought a f- like thousands of dollars worth of pizzas for first responders and yes. police and yes. shit uh, yes. the other day. Yes. Some dude, we talked about him yesterday, but I think uh, I think Xander might know him, but he bought like seven seventy five hundred dollars worth of tacos. Yep. Not even for anybody in particular. He was no. just like, he called the place and said, here, here's... 10, it was 000. a thousand tacos. Yeah, yeah it's like yeah. here's ten thousand bucks. Yes. Give tacos to people. So tacos, to everyone. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so Walt a lot Smith, of people have been very. Uh, the helpful. Cavenders, Michael and Carrie, uh, my neighbors, um, Kathy, and those guys who came over and helped me um, just get out fucking gallons and gallons of water out of my house. Uh, it is dry today, and uh, you know we'll wait for the insurance adjusters to get in and all that shit. Um, but I, I want to say this, man, because you know Texas is taking a lot of heat online. Um, the people of Texas are great humans, dude. And, Mm -hmm. um, I, I honestly, 
haven't felt a sense of community like that where everybody helped out at each other. They can't drive in the for snow. For a long time. Yeah, and we made fun of everybody for I'm gonna, driving I'm gonna, in the snow. I'm going to make fun of them forever for that. For that. But, yeah. I mean, dude, as far as, like, um, being helpful and just great humans, like, shit, Texas, yeah, yeah it's a great state to live Te- in. Texas is the kind of place, if you're driving down the highway and you see a woman changing her own tire, that is not a thing here. No. Like I, everyone not, not, will stop. Not that women can't change tires, but it's kind of like some good old boy shit. Where like, uh, there's no like, I, w- there's some phrase about this. Like a woman should, I, it's it's actually I think a Texan phrase. A woman should know how to change a tire, but she never she should never have to. Exactly. Or something like that. Yeah. And it's just common courtesy for a man to do heavy lifting. Yeah. Stuff like that. But it, it's it goes beyond just gender roles. It's it's everything. You you would be. It would be a it would be a rare occurrence to see somebody struggling alone here, which is why the homeless situation in Austin is so weird to me. Like you know, you don't see it. There's no way in a conservative city you would ever see homelessness like that, right? Because it's just like two different types of it's two different types of ways of dealing with something. The leftist way of dealing with homelessness is to feel empathetic about it, mm-hmm. and man, somebody should do something. Yep. The conservative way is like. I should do something. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And it shouldn't be down party lines. It's not that conservatives are better than leftists. It's that that just happens to be a cultural thing. And I, if you're a, if you're out there, I know a lot of leftist people that would absolutely do anything for somebody that needed help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it yeah. seems to be at least politically, it seems to be pervasive on the left side to to coddle and empathize instead of actually help. You know what I mean? Because yeah. they're, they're more afraid to hurt feelings than they are to than they are willing to help people, and I think that's a problem. And I and I will say this too, like because I've been in. Everybody keeps making memes about me being in like every natural disaster, and, and yes, it does feel like I'm living in Final Destination, the movie, and I'm still alive somehow. Yeah. But um, having been in all these fucked up situations in all these different places uh, around the fucking country, uh, I was in Atlanta during that. Uh, Massive blackout at, at mm. Hartsfield Airport where 150,000 people were. My wife was pregnant. And they put us all on the tarmac. And then everybody was sprinting towards one door to try to get out of there. Nobody helped each other. Yeah. Um, I was living in Los Angeles during all of those rolling blackouts for AC. That was just air conditioning uh, during the <laughs> summer. No one helped each other. Uh, during this in Texas, um, during these rolling blackouts and electricity and all this other shit, everyone helped each other. Uh, down here so shit man i I, yes you can make fun of texas all you want from the outside and i get it man i went to ohio state lived in new york a couple times went to nyu all that other shit it was not enough snow snow for all of this shit Mm. however when you don't have sand or (laughs) rock salt or uh plows or any of that shit like then it becomes a disaster and then all the pipes break and all that other stuff and it is a fucking nightmare. Yeah. Uh, but everyone helped each other out, at least where I live, where yeah. Jared was. The lesson there is not that, by the way, the Texans are better than anybody or that conservatives are better than anybody. It's that when you see they're, they're, the psychological principle of the bystander effect mm-hmm. is very interesting because, uh, uh, what is it, Kitty Genovese, is the major study. It's a woman that got stabbed a bunch of times and everybody just kind of stood there and nobody helped because they were in shock. Yeah. And everybody thought after analysis, everybody thought that somebody else would step in and help be the person that fucking says, no, be the person that says this person's suffering. I have the ability right now. I can't solve every problem, but I can stop this motherfucker suffering right now. Right. Go do it. Yeah. It's really that simple. And and even with us, man, uh, you know, as soon as we heard, Shit, everybody we work with of like, hey, man, we don't have power. We don't have it. We're like, hey, come live in the studio. Who gives a shit? Uh, I don't know how long you guys have been here, but, dude, you're like our family, and we don't care. So it's like, hey, man, just come in, live. Well, if they were really like up, our we family, care. we'd be having sex with them, right? Maybe. Yeah, so fake Dan, uh, it's time for time for you to spread your I'm cheeks. De- I'm declaring prima nocta on all of our employees. <laughs> no, don't shake your head, bitch. <laughs> You don't want this asshole. It's uh, no, and you uh, take. No, I'm gonna. True. That's I'm gonna, a, a lot of crumbs. I'm gonna. I'm, I'm gonna. Asshole. I'm gonna clean you up first. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Obviously, I'm gonna send you to the car wash. And get Nobody that wants a Crohn's asshole. No, uh, that's true. Is no there, one really does. Is there like a support group for women who love anal but have Crohn's? Yes. Or gay be, right? dudes. Gay dudes with Crohn's. Can you imagine that? Start God. that private Facebook. There's gotta group. be gay bottoms with Crohn's. <laughs> <laughs> There's only three people with Crohn's that I know of. It's me. It's Pete Davidson. 
and it's David Garrard. Do you think Pete Davidson's eyeballs are a reflection Eesh. of his Crohn's disease? Buttholes, butthole yeah. eyes. He's one of the least attractive human beings I've ever seen. He's not very funny. And either. he still keeps fucking the hottest women on the planet. Yeah, like is he a good Kate Beckinsale, is, Ariana Grande? Well, he mean, gets that uh, that big dick rap, right? Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's true. He, I heard he's got a hog on him. Yeah, Good I did him. find a Facebook group. <laughs> <laughs> What's the Facebook group? Um, it's the Crohn's and Colitis Foundation announced. Just are you a gay or bi- are you just LGBT and, and uh, have um, IBD? I guess is uh, irritable bowel syndrome, yeah. right? Or irritable Crohn's. bowel disease. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, join our new Facebook support groups to connect with others who can relate to what you're going through in your disease journey. And then they have. Groups for men, groups for men, and groups for for women. That's, That's a great. really it's, shitty organization. It really is. Oh, nailed it. Let's end the show with that. Let's end the show with that. See you. Uh, we will see everyone in hell. Um, and then also, dude, Drink It Bros Sports is doing really fucking well, and uh, we just signed on another sponsor. So subscribe to Drinking Bros Sports channel on there. Um, we've been killing it in college basketball. We, they We're just announced this fans. Hockey and baseball. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Zach Hurd. Can we get him out of fucking Los Angeles and in here? I know we can't pay you what what uh, fucking <clears throat> two and a half men pays you or whatever show you're yeah. working on. But it also doesn't cost as much to live here as it does in L.A. You come, motherfucker. Come work in. Cocaine's cheaper here, too. Yes, dude. Come to fucking hockey so here. It's like, um, so we're expanding that <laughs> network. And then uh, these guys' show is, is my favorite, the college basketball show. Uh, I, I took the Ohio State bet with Hot Bob last night. We mm-hmm. won a shit $1,500. So. Take Duke, Virginia tomorrow. I am. <laughs> Oh shit! Well, Wait, this, the show will be afterwards. Are you taking Virginia or Duke? Virginia now? is, uh, as far as I can minus tell, still two. minus two at Duke. I'm, That's a crazy line. I am Virginia all should in be, on that. It should be minus six Take Duke. plus, right? Take Duke. Take Duke. You're, You're losing. Duke, Duke it's, lost his best player. Yeah, but it's it in Cameron matter. Indoor, and he rebound. thinks it's going to be a rally game. Yeah, rally. He, he, no, he could be right. There's no fans. He could be right. There's no fans. What's the What's the money line on that though? It's still like one sixty like or something. Plus it's shitty because it's oh, it's only one twenty. Yeah. If it's a two point line, then yeah, it's like one twenty or one. That's not even worth the bet. I'm taking Virginia. Um, Duke but, wins but again. When this air, well, I'll tell you what. When this show airs, you'll know. Yeah, we'll know. So whether Ross is right again for his 90th fucking time in a row, or whether Fake Dan is right again. I'm all in on Virginia, and I'm betting a grand on it. Definitely right on that. Drinking, uh, or uh, what is it? Drinking Bros, the promo code for uh, mybookie.com. Yeah. Double your deposit and bet on that shit. Uh, for Danthony and Anthony Holloway, uh, I am Ross Patterson. We are the Drinking Bros Podcast. Good night, everyone. <laughs>